This task is from the Math Whiz badge, and a scout has to guess the number of jelly beans in a jar. She doesn't have to guess right, she just has to guess. She doesn't even have to use math in this, but I am going to try. I don't like jelly beans much at all except for the really expensive kind that tastes like cotton candy, and I just wasn't going to spend that money on this. I could have bought the cheap ones, but then they would have gone to waste, and I'm pretty sure a few badges are pretty seriously dissuading waste these days, so I've made a substitute. I'm going with M&M's, not just the regular M&M's. I've got it mixed up with regulars and minis and peanut and peanut butter. Why? Because I figure that it's a lot harder to guess the number in a jar when there are multiple sizes, and I think I'm right. I also tried to do this with two containers. Let's start with the cylinder, shall we? Yes, it's not that big, but it has the disadvantage of being aluminum, so I can't see through any glass sides. For this one, I used only regular and mini M&Ms. Now through high school, most of us ask the question, will we really use math as an adult? There were exceptions, of course. I went to school with a brilliant young man, who I think might actually be teaching math at Princeton, or something like that these days, so he used his math, but I haven't used it much. And I had to think long and hard about this cylinder. If my old schoolmate ever saw this, I'm pretty sure he'd roll his eyes way into the back of his head and then defriend me on Facebook. Anyway, the volume of a cylinder is height times pi times the radius squared. I thought that maybe that would help, so I measured the height of the candy, which was about two and a half inches. The diameter is 4.75, and therefore the radius is half of that, or 2.375 inches. So if I'm remembering the equation correctly, volume would be 2.5 times 3.142 pi times 5.64, which is the radius squared. And that totaled 44.3 volume. 44.3. But what the hell does that mean? I seriously could not answer that question. It was of no help to me at all. So I tried another approach. I just counted the top layer of candies. And then I guessed the numbers of layers of candies. Top layer, 160 pieces. Layers of them, probably around nine. Multiply those two and we get my guess of 1,440. This, as it turned out, was not correct. Now let's pause for a moment to let you take your own guess. Here's another look. Pause this if you want to consider it because I'm about to tell you the answer. And here it is. The correct guess would have been 1,162. I was off by 278 and I gave it almost 25% more candies in there. My problem, I think, was in overestimating those layers. Had I gone with seven instead of nine, I would have come in at 1,120, a mere 42 off of the total. Of course, had I gotten to see the candies through the glass, I might have nailed it. But then again, I might have not, as this next demonstration shows. Here we're filling a larger rectangular jar with all four varieties of M&Ms. That whole volume thing wasn't going to be much help to me either here, but if I remember correctly, volume would be equal length times width times height, and of course, we're not measuring inches, we're measuring candies of varied sizes. I wondered momentarily if I could count the candies visible on one side and on the bottom and then use that formula to come up with something that might work. I saw 158 candies on one side, 63 on the bottom, and it was a rectangle. So I threw down 158 times 63 times 63 for a total of 627,102. But I was pretty sure that there weren't that many candies in that jar. I tried counting the candies just along the edges to get a bizarre measurement of length, height, and width, but again, those, those figures were just nutty. So I visualized success. I eyeballed it. And before I give you my answer, here's your chance to pause the video and come up with your own guess. Ready? Set? Okay, here's what I did. I counted 158 candies against one side of the glass, and for some reason, it felt like there were about, ooh, 11 columns worth of candies in there. So my guess was 1,738. This was wrong, but not quite as wrong as my first try. There were, in the jar, 120 peanut M&Ms, 126 peanut butter M&Ms, 422 regular M&Ms, and 899 minis. The grand total, 1,567. 
I overshot it by 171 candies, which is about an 11% margin of error, I believe. So what are my takeaways? Well, I think I've got four. First, it does help to be able to see through the side of the container. Multiple sizes inside that container probably do make it more difficult to guess accurately. Peanut butter M&Ms are my favorite, hands down. And four, finally, I think I probably need to go back to math class. Actually, if there's someone out there that can help me understand what math might have helped me guess better, I'd love to hear from you. Email me or post a comment on the blog. Now here's a word for my husband Charles, who is here to certify that I did not cheat on this. I totally screwed it up all on my own. Okay, Charles, tell them that I didn't cheat. The most certainly did not. <laughs> I can fully attest and confirm that uh, she guessed and then counted them all. And, and didn't I guess very poorly? Better than I would. Oh, you're so good. Thanks, sweetie. Sure. Thanks, doll. And seriously, if there is some math that could have helped me do this better, I really want to know about it, and I will even repeat this task. The way I look at it, buy chocolate, earn a badge. 